I was caught in my confusion, an illusion of my own, paralyzed and staring at the floor. Could he use a helping hand? Cause I couldn't understand what all the fight and suffering was for. But I ain't running no more, I ain't walking out the door. I ain't running, I ain't running no more. I ain't running no more like so many times before. I ain't running, I ain't running no more. I was running on empty, I was running like the wind. No confronting, I was running out the door. Fell ashamed and I was blaming just the victim of my own. Now I'm done and I ain't running no more. I ain't running no more. I ain't walking out the door. I ain't running. I ain't running no more. I ain't running no more like so many times before. I ain't running. I ain't running no more. All those stories of old, they don't need to be told. I will dry up the tears of my journey. I will face all the fears that I've run from for years. I ain't running no more. I ain't walking out the door. I ain't running. I ain't running no more. I ain't running no more like so many times. My time is now 
if not now, when? It's time to take this leap of faith without a net. Hello to destiny and goodbye regret. If not now, when? If not me, who? I can't pretend. Cause I know it's true. I make this vow. I swear. I ain't running no more, I ain't walking out the door I ain't running, I ain't running no more I ain't running no more like so many times before I ain't running, I ain't running no more I was caught in my confusion, an illusion of my own Paralyzed and staring at the floor Could you? a helping hand cause I couldn't understand what all the fight and suffering was for but I ain't running no more I ain't walking out the door I ain't running I ain't running no more I ain't running no more like so many times before I ain't running I ain't running no more I was running on empty I was running like the Running, I was running out the door Felt ashamed and I was blaming Just the victim of my own Now I'm done and I ain't running no more I ain't running no more I ain't walking out the door I ain't running, I ain't running no more I ain't running no more Like so many times before I ain't running, I ain't Hey everybody, thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm really happy, happy to be here, happy you're here. Uh, very excited uh, to have my special guest tonight. And uh, I'm not quite sure if I'm excited to have a birthday or not. You know, as, uh, as the years go on and you get older, you know there are few, fewer and fewer of them that are coming. So on one hand, you value them more. On the other hand, there's a little bit of doom there. So we'll probably talk about that, but this is really about the joy of, of being alive, uh, of being healthy, and being alive more than just physically, being alive spiritually, and that, that to me is creatively. Uh, I'm, I'm blessed that, uh, that I somehow found music or music found me, and I've been doing it most of my life. Uh, kind of wandered into it quite by accident, and I'll ask my guests. Probably the same thing. I'm guessing nobody at five years old decided they were going to be a musician, but we'll soon find that out. I sure didn't. I just kind of wandered into it in my early 20s, and I said, wow, this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. So here I am still in my 70s, and uh, all my guests are, and that's kind of what I want to make the theme tonight, that you know what, you can, you can be older, and you can be in your 70s. Is 70s a new 60s, a new 50s? I don't know. Uh, it is what it is. It sounds pretty old, uh, but I feel pretty good, and I feel really fortunate to be able to still have my hands working, have my voice working, have my mind working, and be able to take everything that I've that I've learned and picked up 
and, and be able to pass it on. I think that's what it's all about, passing it on. And I feel so grateful to be able to do that. So uh, I want to celebrate that tonight, and uh, I'll bring my guests on pretty soon. I want to do a couple songs. I'm just kind of set this thing up. Uh, I really appreciate appreciate y'all being here. Uh, if you uh, want to donate or give me a present, uh, that'd be great. Uh, we all like presents on our birthdays. Uh, that's not really the idea of this whole thing, but, you know, it, it'd be nice. Another thing you can do, though, if you don't feel it, would be to become one of my patrons. If you don't know, there's a thing called Patreon, which is uh, really cool. And it's a way where you can help support us musicians. And in return, we give you all sorts of special perks. And if you go on my Patreon page, uh, especially if you join $7, it's $7 a month. And uh, I've got a couple of uh, brand new songs on there, new mixes that are really, really cool, uh, only for my patrons. Eventually they'll be on my CD, but uh, that, that's a while down the road. Uh, new excerpts from my book, uh, a whole bunch of stuff that are only for the patrons. So there'll be some information that Brandon posts on the chat, and uh, I'd very much appreciate it if you join. Uh, appreciate the support, and I'd love to give you back something in return. You know, as you get older, I think what happens is uh, you, come, you come a bit more into your own, and you get more comfortable in your own skin. Uh, if you're lucky, if you do a little bit of work, uh, I am lucky, and I've done a little bit of work. And uh, and you kind of stop running. You, you stop running from whatever it is you're running from. You never quite know what that is. But uh, I think you also start running from, stop running from yourself. And, uh, and you become just more comfortable with who you are and you accept who you are and you accept things. And that's kind of what this song is about, uh, past, present, and future. Well, I guess probably past and present. But it's called I Ain't Running No More. I know you like this song, Jack and Judy goes out to you guys. I ain't running no more. I ain't walking out the door. I ain't running. I ain't running no more. I ain't running no more like so many times before. I ain't running. I ain't running no more. I was caught in my confusion, an illusion of my own Paralyzed and staring at the floor Could have used a helping hand Cause I couldn't understand What all the fight and suffering was for But I ain't running no more I ain't walking out the door I ain't running, I ain't running I ain't run no more like so many times before I ain't running, I ain't running no more I was running on empty, I was running against the wind No confronting, I was running out the door Felt ashamed and I was blaming, just a victim of my own Now I'm done and I ain't running no more I ain't running no more, I ain't walking out the door I ain't running, I ain't running no more I ain't running no more like so many times before I ain't running, I ain't running no more All those stories of old, they don't need to be told I'll dry up the tears of my journey and I'll face all the fears that I've run from for years. But I ain't running no more. I ain't walking out the door. I ain't running. I ain't running no more. I ain't running no more like so many times before. I ain't running. I ain't running no more. Sing it with me. I ain't running no more. Walking out the door, I ain't running, I ain't running no more. I ain't running no more like so many times before. I ain't running, I ain't running no more. I ain't running, I ain't running no more. No more. No more.
Hey, wow, thanks for all those birthday wishes. Victor and Vicky and Joe Gaswert, thank you, buddy. Kurt, Danny Karen, all right. Did some playing with Maria, Harold, David, Kern. Wow, thank you all. Can't name you all, but really appreciate you being here. It's uh, fantastic. Well, let's see. I think what I want to do now is... Uh, With all this stuff going on in in Russia and in Ukraine and, and all over the world, and uh, you know, there's just uh, just so much division going on, and uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of economic uh, disparity, and uh, you know, it, it one of the things is, as songwriters, and I haven't been as, a lot of you know that I, I didn't really start writing songs in my mid 40s, but you know, when you start writing, you start thinking, well, what are you, what are you going to write about? And uh, Chris, of course, writes about everything, and Jack writes about everything, and Maria hardly writes at all, but we got a new song that she wrote that we're going to play for you, and uh, she's going to play for you. We're going to do a video. But uh, I like to write songs about all sorts of things, about love, about dogs, about the human condition. Uh, you try and write a political song, it's kind of tough because you don't want to be preachy. But uh, I thought I would write a song about about homelessness and uh, something that, that really is just, just really sad. You know, and you see a lot of people you see in L.A. and all these tents and I don't believe any of these people ever intended to be homeless. I'm sure they didn't. You know, a lot of vets, some people with mental illness, a whole bunch of people in uh, in Ukraine are going to be homeless and, uh, you know, being refugees. So I actually wrote a new verse in my homeless song. I have a song called When There's No Place Like Home, and I'd like to play you that new verse and uh, throw it into the song because... Uh, it's just really sad, you know. It's really sad. I mean, it's obviously it's awful, but uh, there are a lot of a uh, lot of personal lives you get caught up in the in the madness of somebody shooting for power. It's usually, what it is, folks. So I want to do that song for you. When there's no place like home, let me get the capos correct here. with you folks as you all know we tune because we care you know that when there's no place like home could you hold that up for me Alice please Kosovo. Did I say Kosovo? <laughs> oh my God, in Ukraine. In Russia. A lot of those people don't want to sing anyway. Here we go. I used to be a teacher Had a family in Kiev But the Russian tanks were coming and I knew I had to leave So we packed up a few belongings Joined a million refugees Now we're in a tent Can someone help me please When there's no place like home And you're out on your own you feel abandoned and alone When there's no place like home I used to be a hero The strong, the proud, the few When duty called I stood up tall 
for the red, white, and blue. There were never heroes welcome waiting when my damaged soul returned. Uncle Sam don't give a damn, that's what I learned. When there's no place like home and you're out on your own, you feel abandoned and alone when there's no place like home. Please don't look right past me, a simple smile could help me make it through. I could be you. If home is where the heart is, then where's the heart supposed to go? When your living room's a cardboard box and your address is Skid Row. If a man's home is his castle and the place where he is king, what happens when he loses everything when there's no place like home and you're out on your own you feel abandoned and alone when there's no place like home when there's no place like home There's no place like home Ah, sad song, sad song. Let me play a happier one for you and then bring on my guests here. This is a new one. This is a fun little song. I was, a couple years ago, I was walking with my dog, Hepburn. And I kind of came up with this. Marie, you know I have dog songs. When I, when I mentioned to you that I was going to do an album of dog songs, you, you suggested Old Shep. I went, yeah, what a great idea. This one didn't make it because uh, it's a new one called Wishing My Shadow Is You.
Now the season has changed, but the light is the same as the night that we walked here with you. There was nothing so sweet as those three sets of feet. Now it seems so lonesome with two. Then the dog looked my way like he wanted to say, You know I was thinking that too. Just me and my dog on a full moon night, both wishing my shadow was you. Missing you. Missing you, oh how I wish I was kissing you. Missing you, missing you, seems it was all we could do. Just me and my dog on a full moon night, both wishing my shadow was you. The wish in my shadow was you. Ah, just a couple songs for you, all completely different. Let's bring in our guests. Brandon, can we uh, can we zoom in Jack Williams and Maria Muldaur and Chris Smither so that we can all say hello to each other and and meet? <laughs> hey, Jack. Hey. <laughs> can we hear you? <clears throat> can you hear me? Okay. Hey. hey. Oh, hey, I Maria. know why. Hello. Hello. I don't have hello. Maria, I haven't seen I you in so long. I can't hear anybody. Hey, hey Chris. Wrong Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Aha. Uh-huh. Can you hear me? Now I can hear you. Rebo, can you turn this up louder? Because I can hardly hear anything. Well, I think. Is uh, there a way to. Can you hear me good? I can hear you great. Yeah. Well, I think what, what you need to do is you need to turn up your uh, your computer, your headphones, your volume on that a little bit, Maria. You, you think I didn't try that already? I've got it all the way maxed up. <laughs> You got it matched but up. Huh? Just, just holler at me when you want me. Uh, to. <laughs> well, what I what I want you to do? Say hello to Jack Williams because you guys have never met. Hi there, Jack. Hello, nice Maria. to meet you. Nice to meet you. And and of course, Chris Smither. You and Chris know each other. Oh yeah. Where where are you, Jack? Where are you actually? Uh, let me see. Where am I? I'm in the Ozarks <laughs> of Northwest Arkansas. Oh my goodness! And you, Chris? Amherst, Massachusetts. Oh, all right. I'm down here in Daytona Beach, Florida. So here we all are, celebrating Freebo's birthday. Yeah, he well, finally caught that, up with me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not quite, not quite. You got me by a couple months, Jack. But hey, you know, I mean, uh, but while I got you all here, I mean, I, you know. Uh, we're all in our 70s, and we're all doing it, and we're all still doing it. We've all been doing it for a long time. And uh, let me just go one at a time and just give me your, give me your thoughts on, on what it's like to still be doing it, to have done it, to be able to uh, know your history and honor your history at the same time not be living in the past and living in the present. How about you, Maria? You're asking me? I am asking you, yes. You talking to me? I'm okay, talking to you. Well, okay, well, let's see. People ask me, oh, when are you going to retire? And I go, why should I retire? I love what I'm doing. And I feel like it's been a lifelong journey. Kind of my, my particular path has been a long and rambling odyssey through various forms of American roots music. And I... And, um, I still have so much to discover and learn and uh, things I want to express. And, and so there's no slowing down for me. Well, you know, the pandemic kind of slowed us all down a little bit, but uh, I still was able to make an album, my 43rd album during that time. And I went down to New Orleans and 
recorded with a wonderful band that's my favorite band right now a bunch of street musicians named tuba skinny and uh, they're they're just great they're all over youtube i i strongly urge you and your your listeners followers to to check them out uh, because they're they're keeping a very wonderful tradition of american music alive uh, mostly the blues and jazz of the 20s and 30s Anyway, we put together an album called Let's Get Happy Together, and I'm happy to announce it just was nominated for a Best Acoustic Blues Album in the Blues Music Awards. So I've got that, go that going on and touring still, and um, things like preparing for this album, I had to delve way deep into the archives of time to find 12 good songs to do, and, and it was... Uh, this is what makes me stay alive and excited. I mean, I, I, I thought I knew a lot about 20s and 30s jazz because I've listened to it all my life, having been in the Jim Queskin Jug Band way back in the day. And, uh, and to just delve into uh, recordings of the past and discover there's so much I don't know and have yet to discover. So as long as this uh, journey continues to be this interesting, I'm going to keep doing it till I can't do it no more. Well, Maria, I, I got great respect for you. I mean, I, uh, when I started playing in, in the Edison Electric Band back in, we started oh, God, in 66, so 60, I guess it really started going like 67, 68, and I got turned on to the Jug Band and, and to you and Jeff and, and to that amazing voice you have that's unlike anybody else's. And, and uh, and and just your history, just and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that. But I mean, just to know you and having having played with you so much, and and to see you still going, and people like you really, really give me you know, the strength to continue. Uh, because it, you're right. I mean, I don't. I mean, I've heard the word retire. <laughs> I I I mean, why retire from something that you love? And for me, exactly. I, I, I don't know how to do anything else. So I, I kind of have no exactly. choice. Exactly. I can't even type, so I better keep singing. Exactly. How about you, Chris? Oh, God. You know, it's all a question of getting up every morning. You know, as long as, <laughs> <laughs> as, long as you keep getting up, it just keeps on going. I, I did an interview today with a guy in, um, in New Mexico, because that's going to be towards the tail end of, this, of a tour that's starting in a couple of weeks. And, and he said, how do you account for your longevity? He says, you've been doing this for 57 years. <laughs> and I, you know, and that was what I told him. I said, well, the first thing you got to do is not learn how to do anything else, which both of you guys <laughs> have covered, you know, because if you do know how to do something else, then sure enough, as soon as it gets tough, you're going to quit. <laughs> <laughs> and go do something that's a little more regular, you know. But um, I, I just been incredibly lucky, you know. It just, you know, I wound up. I feel like I fell out of a tree, and landed on my feet. And and I, I've um, been able to get through this far in my life just doing something that I I totally love to do. And when I talk to people who you know, I, I know so many people who can't stand their jobs, or, or at least they 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 finally only mildly tolerable. And I think to myself, I love my job. You know, <laughs> it's just it, it makes you feel really lucky. And when I look back over how it all started, I remember in and I don't know if Maria remembers this, but in the in the uh, winter of '65 and '66. I first met her in Eric Von Schmidt's house in Sarasota, in Sarasota Florida. And, uh, <laughs> and most of the jug band was there at the time. And, uh, and I, was, I was so starstruck. <laughs> I, was, you know, I was walking around going, holy shit, you know, I'm hanging out here with, with people that I know from record covers. And it's just been such a long, crazy trip since you know ups and downs and ins and outs but it just keeps going and now i have you know i can't tell you how many times people come up to me and say please just don't stop what you're doing you know and i feel obliged i feel obligated <laughs> almost <laughs> even if i didn't feel like it to get out there and play for people you know and it does me 
it, it just fills my heart up, you know. Uh, I that, just keep that, filling my heart up till it quits, I guess. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, and that I, I couldn't agree with you more, Chris. I mean, it's it's a good way to put it. It's as you fill your heart up, you you we get to fill other people's hearts as well. And uh, I mean, man, what a what a two way gift that is. You know, and there aren't that many people who can really do that. And and like I say, I mean, you know, I, I'm the same way. I mean, I I love playing music more than I ever have, no matter what it is, whether it's playing bass or singing, accompanying somebody else, writing, producing. It's just it's such a gift, and it's just so much fun. And the more you get to know, you know, and the more you let go of your of your stuff, uh, the more fun it becomes. And you know, that's what it's all about. Right, Jack? Right. <laughs> <laughs> what he said. Yes, sir, man. Um, I just, I can't, I can't imagine doing anything else. All I know is how good it makes me feel to see people feeling whatever I'm putting out there. And they, it comes back from them. The two-way street when you're on the stage. Um, hey, Jack, sure I, I, Jack, Jack, I hate, hate it, that, that uh, intermittent uh, clicking that, uh, is the crackling, crackling back? Is, is back. Yeah, the crackling is back. Because uh, is there any way we can... My, this has been can, in my tracks we can for... Mitigate it'll go that. away. It'll go away. Will it go away? Because oh. uh, I really want to hear what you're saying. I want to hear you sing. Because I, I really want you to sing a song. Maria's never heard you before. You know, so if we can just get rid of that crackling I, while she's on I, here. I have no idea how to do it. We've tried everything here. Yeah. Is it still crackling? Brandon, is there a, do you think possibly we can uh, have Jack, you know, leave and come back? Is that a possibility? That, that has worked successfully before. Not always, but it has worked once or twice. <laughs> so it's definitely worth a try. And we could start with uh, start with Chris, maybe. Yeah, because I, I definitely want you to, to share in that same thing, Jack, without a doubt. Well, we try uh, that. Yeah, and I'm sorry about the crackling. It has happened several times recently. Uh, and we have checked every connection. I sat here in this very microphone in the same setup and recorded my CD for two years, my pandemic CD, without a glitch. And as soon as Zoom comes on, the crackle hits. You know. So I'm well, going away, okay, but not but, for long. But do come back, please. Farewell. Hey, so Brandon, maybe while, we're, uh, while we wait for him to come back, uh, Maybe we can play that song of uh, of Maria's, the Tuba Skinny song. What do you think, Maria? Because I'd like to hear that. Okay, can I tell tell you tell you all a little oh, bit about it? Ab absolutely. Okay, well, um, when I found out I was going to get the opportunity to work with Tuba Skinny, I started delving around right away, trying to find songs that would be suitable for our collaboration. And the very first song I found was one written by Lil Hardin Armstrong, who was Louis Armstrong's first wife. She also was a band leader, played piano, sang, wrote great songs. And there was a bunch of stuff on YouTube of, uh, of hers. And the very first song I heard was one called Let's Get Happy Together. And I thought, what a great, what a great title. Listen to the song. And it absolutely is a, a joyful song. And that's the, also the title of the album. And, uh, after two years of the pandemic, I think it's a perfect song to, to share with people. Oh, that would be great. Brandy, can we make that happen? Baby and I lost mine I got 
got a nickel and you got a dime We'll drown our troubles in wine And we'll get happy together Oh, why should we worry Just because they turned us down Come on, baby, let's show them We'll show them that we're no clown Now you can dance and I can sing I got the finger and you got the ring We'll get the parson to fix this thing And we'll be happy together, yeah! you happy listen to it. I just had a huge smile the whole time could not get rid of it that's wow. the idea that's our job as far as I'm concerned uh, where, where, how can not people... to show off our licks or how fancy we can play or sing but just to lift people's spirits so with a song like that it's easy to do uh, you're absolutely right it's a great choice where can people get that record why, I'm so glad you asked, Freebo. Uh, just <laughs> I, anywhere online. It, it came out on the wonderful Roots music label out of Canada, Stony Plain Records. And so it's available on their website. And uh, wherever good records are sold, records, listen to me, CDs, music is sold. It's on Spotify. It's on all them weird places. Well, hopefully people can get the actual physical copy in. So you yes, get something because out of I it. slaved over the liner notes on this one. I wanted to share a lot of information about all the original artists whose songs we we recorded. So, uh, yeah, the real copy is is the way to go. I definitely think. Oh, for sure. Well, that that's fan. I can't wait to hear the whole record. It's, I mean, being a, a tuba guy and <clears throat> growing up with Louis Armstrong and that whole style of music at Dixieland thing. And uh, I remember uh, Thelma Middleton singing uh, with him, All That Meat, No Potatoes. And, oh, uh, yeah. You, 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 you just reprising that stuff. It, it's so cool, and you do it so well. And uh, great, you. great choice. That's fantastic. Wow. Jack, let's see huh? if you're crackling. <laughs> Wake up there. If I am, I can't do anything about it. Just, oh, you're not. There's no crackling. There's no snapping. There's no pop either. That's great. Don't say that. 
Well, <laughs> hey, Jack, I, I would love it if uh, I know I requested a couple of songs, but since Maria's never heard you, I think one of the first songs I ever heard you do and that might be an interesting introduction for Maria for you uh, would be uh, uh, Old Josh White. I can do that. What do you call that song? A Natural Man. Natural Man. Yeah. Yeah. Check this out, Maria. Okay. Because I hate to say I it, used Maria to didn't see know. Josh Mar White in the village years ago. I was a big fan of his. Mm. I was a big fan of his. He's from my home state, South Carolina. All right. And they just unveiled they just unveiled a a new memorial statue sculpture of him and his life story right in downtown Greenville. And this is this this uh -huh. is a really conservative city where right down the road from that statue is Bob Jones University. And oh. wow. So, uh, so Greenville, South Carolina has is, is, is got a big gold star on his forehead for uh, honoring a wonderful favorite son. I wrote this song just because I loved him and his music. And I uh, Josh White was a natural man Held a plug nickel in the palm of his hand He raised it up like a glass to his eye What he saw through the nickel made the natural man cry Lord, 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 this morning made a natural man cry Then through the nickel a vision arose he saw an actor in the jungle with a bone in his nose. He saw a maid in an apron with a Hollywood grin. Heard a singer at the back door slamming again. Lord, 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 heard the back door slamming again. High up on the mountain sat the Lord and the natural man. Oh, Josh White got the gift of song, but he never saw the promised land. He never saw the promised land. So Josh White laid the nickel down. He put his hands in his pockets and strolled into town. He looked to the left and over to the right. But he couldn't find a place to spend his money that night. Lord, 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 he sure want to spend some money tonight. Now he ran to the hotel, dollar in hand. But they wouldn't take a dollar from no colored man. He said, it's getting mighty late, mister, where can I go? He said, well, play me a tune, I'll let you sleep on the floor. Lord, 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 Josh White asleep on the floor. High upon a mountain sat the Lord and the natural man. Oh, Josh White got the gift of song, but he never saw the promised land. He never saw the promised land. Way up yonder where the angels are found All the blood from his fingers stained the heavenly ground There ain't nothing to do but to do what you do And you do it till they roll a stone over you Lord, 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 don't let them roll a stone over you High up on the mountain sat the Lord and the natural man Oh, Josh White got the gift of song, but he never saw the promised land. High upon a mountain, I heard a cold black angel sing. 
And a better plug nickel if you came back tomorrow. It wouldn't change a goddamn thing. It wouldn't, wouldn't change a goddamn thing. Oh, 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 Josh White. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. That's uh, the one. That's wonderful, Jack. Thank you, Freebo. Oh, thanks for playing that. So, Maria, that's just a, a little taste. Yes. A little taste of Jack Williams. <laughs> Pardon? That's just a little taste of Jack Williams for you. Well, you know, the first taste is free, they say. So now I'll have, I'm going to check them out. That was a very soulful song. Beautiful, Jack. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> well, uh, and just before we get to Chris, Jack, would you just uh, put your two cents in as far as what uh, Chris and Maria said about, uh, you know, playing music and being in your 70s and having done it and still loving it? I, well, everything they said applies right here. Um, I've been doing it professionally since September of 1958. Wow. About, six, about 63 years. Um, I've always determined to stay deliberately under the radar, which is why you never heard of me. And, um, <laughs> but that means that my career plan is working beautifully. <laughs> and, um, but I like it out here. Um, I played the bars for years and... and um, was satisfied with the fact that I was making music and that I could play it. I was a trumpet player. I was a Dixieland trumpet player back in the 50s and early 60s. And uh, yeah, man, I listened to Louis Armstrong, even recorded one of his um, W.C. Handy songs, uh, you know, and I just, I loved that music. And I loved the joyful noise of the clarinet, the trombone, the trumpet, you know, crawling oh, around yeah. like snakes all over each other, you know. But um but the whole thing is that I hear people all the time today talking about, wow, it's just so hard to move like I used to. Well, so what, man? You're moving. <laughs> you are here. You're alive. And, you're, and I'm doing exactly what I've been doing since I was four when I learned to play the ukulele. I knew I was going to be a musician. Um, I just, what more could I ask out of my 78 years? What more can I ask? And the fact is, I've got my health. I'm headed out tomorrow morning for some gigs in Florida and up to D.C. I, what more can I want? Um, I don't complain. When I get out of the bed, it takes me a while to stretch it out. And, you know, I feel things that I didn't feel when I was younger. And all I feel is gratitude. That's what I feel. When my bones ache, when I get out of bed, that's the, this is the way it is. This is this part of life. The other part of life, it was jump out of bed, run out and get on your bicycle and go down the street. And now you get up, stretch out, and wait till things, and you enjoy. You enjoy every friggin' step of the way. And you pick up your guitar, and D, it just sounds so pretty. <laughs> it still sounds pretty. And um, in, in my college days, I was a composer. I would write, and um, I found out that the, the symphony, the, the two concertos I wrote and the woodwind quintets and all the stuff that I wrote will never get played and never get heard. And I wanted to communicate with people. And so I stuck to my rock and roll side and found the folk world where I was able to sit in a room like a house concert and talk to people and play the music and they ask sensible, thoughtful questions about it. And it touches them. I sing the song about my mother, and they say, it reminds me of my mother and her cooking. You, this communication thing can go on for as long as I can. And I'm just going to stick with it until I can't do it no more. I believe you said that, Maria. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right on, Jack. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, that, that, that's killer. Jack, for those people in the chat who want to know where you're playing, and how they get a hold of you, where's the best place to find out where you're playing and, and get a hold of you if they want you to play in their town or uh, hear your music? 
Well, that's um, easily done. JackWilliamsMusic.com. Don't go to JackWilliams.com or you'll get air conditioning or tires or something like that. <laughs> um, but JackWilliamsMusic.com, everything is there. My CDs, I have, um, I think, 11 of them there. I've just, I've just finished my part of recording, my newest one. I am so thrilled with it. I'm not a tech person. But I learned with the help of a good friend, Kelly Mulholland, who's still on the hill, and my, my left brain wife, who was able to keep me on the road, I learned Pro Tools. And we managed to put this album together, and I am thrilled with it. And that will be out, and you can find out about that at jackwilliamsmusic.com. And Maria will be down and playing in Florida, in Gainesville, and Fort Lauderdale, um, Saturday and Sunday of this week. And uh, sorry I'm not making it up to Daytona. Uh, I used to go to the Daytona Beach Music Festival in 66 or 67. The London Symphony Orchestra came across the big pond, settled there for a month, put on concerts. I saw the young, the 21-year-old Itzhak Perlman hobble up to the stage and blow us out of the auditorium. Uh, I have fond memories of, of uh, wherever it is that you are, I forget. But that's what we seniors are all about. <laughs> So uh, that's all I have to say. That's where you can find me. I'm on Facebook, Jack Williams Music One. If you want to visit yeah, that, there, yeah, that that one is important because uh, I was coming up with a different. Yeah, so Jack Williams Music One, right? On Facebook. There are there are so many Jack Williamses and so many Jack Williams musicians out there. A young kid called me. He wrote me an email, um, and he said, "Mr. Williams, I'm." fairly new at this, but I realize that there's going to be a conflict with your name and mine in the music business. Would you mind changing your name so I can kind of make some headway? <laughs> I, I said, okay, right away, uh, I'll go and I'll, I'll, yeah, be, yeah. Uh, I'll be Maria Smither. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so nobody, ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only Jack Williams just doesn't work. Nope. Uh, not true. <laughs> Chris, I'd segue to you. Does that work? The one and only Chris Smither. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's another one who's um, um, a pornographic filmmaker, but I <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> You're making that up. Come on. Yes, yes, I am. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I've never run into another one, you know. It was interesting to listen to, you know, because Jack was saying he knew he was going to be a musician when he was four. I certainly didn't, but my uncle did. My father's brother, Howard, he knew he was going to be a musician from the time he was five, and he was, and he was playing in jazz bands until he died last year at 95. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah. He taught me my doing? first three chords on the ukulele. Uh, was CFG story. was it or I didn't even know what the names were he just said he tuned it to an open tuning and he showed me oh. open 5th fret 7th fret and he, he said there you go and, oh, uh, yeah. he said now I sing like one of your little songs <laughs> sing one of your songs and so I started singing it and he says no you gotta sing it in the same key as the uke you know? <laughs> and uh, so I started doing that and it sounded pretty good, and then it didn't sound good. And he said, "Okay, we'll try one of the other chords." You know, so <laughs> I did. <laughs> you know, and then I I tried again, and he took me through a whole verse, and I said, "Well, then what happens?" And he says, "Well, the next verse is just the same; it just repeats." You know, and I said, "Is it really that easy?" And he says, "Yeah." He says, "You know, with three chords, you can play almost any song you know." And then he said, "If you learn four chords, you can rule the world." <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. So have you learned a fifth one since? Yeah, well, I ruined my, my, my dreams of world conquest by learning about 30 of them. So <laughs> <laughs> if I'd stuck with four, I'd have been on top of the world. <laughs> I think you're doing all right. Wow. <laughs> hey, would you, would you share a song with us, Chris? Sure, sure. Uh, here, I'll play this because I know you like this song. And... And Maria was talking about New Orleans and... Um, oh, are you going to play the Merleton song? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, goody, I was going to ask you for that. I yeah. love that song. The, um, 
And being as yesterday was Mardi Gras. Yeah, you're so, right. Very New Orleans in the air. So for people who aren't familiar with this song, I don't know where you've been, but <laughs> it's um, the, um, now I just like to briefly explain that the chorus to this song comes from the street song of the fruit and vegetable man that used to come down the street that I grew up on. And uh, New Orleans used to be full of these guys, and uh, there's virtually none of them left, but <clears throat> it's one of the, the uh, most vivid memories from my childhood. He would come down the street singing at the top of his lungs about what he had on his truck. Yay! You know, I don't know much when I knew less than I was heartbroken for the first time. I was drowning in my tears and I went looking for a lifeline. I was just trying to find some comfort, a simple tender touch. I was searching for some little cure that would not cost too much. And I could hear that produce wagon on the street. I could hear that farmer singing as I cried myself to sleep. I got banana, watermelon, peaches by the pound, sweet corn, melon, more better than in town. I got okra, yeah, enough to choke your beans of every kind. If hungry is what's eating you. I'll sell you a piece of mine But this ain't what you came to hear me say I hate to disappoint you But I got no love today I got no love today I got no I could not love to save myself from lonesome desperation Everything I thought was love was worthless imitation And my concept of commitment was to take all you could give I thought the cheapest thrills I loved were teaching me to live But nothing seemed to last or see me through Nothing that little song I still sing for you I got banana, watermelon, peaches by the pound Sweet corn, melaton, more better than in town I got okra, yeah, enough to choke your beans of every kind And if hungry is what's eating you, I could sell you peace of mind but this ain't what you came to hear me say I hate to disappoint you I got no love today I got no love today I got no love today No love today Got no love today, none tomorrow, not now, not forever. You can't see what comes for free, I think you much too clever. For your own good, I'll tell you what's right before your eyes. Intelligence is no defense against what this implies. In the end, no one will sell you what you need. Can't buy it off the shelf. You got to grow it from the seed. Cause I got banana and watermelon, peaches by the pound. Sweet corn, early on more better than in town. I got okra, yeah, enough to choke your beans of every kind. If hungry is what's eating you, I'm gonna sell you peace of mind. But this ain't what you came to hear me say. I 
I hate to disappoint you But I'm gonna disappoint you I got no love today I got no love today I got no Chris, that's wonderful. Thank you. Man. I, mean, I mean, I love right when it gets to the end. I mean, just the message, you know. I mean, I I, I can't sell you what you really need, and it's just it's brilliant the way you just throw that in there. It's just a nice little, nice little <laughs> moment of getting on your little pedestal. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's great. Tell them yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, uh, I you know I was. I'm looking, listening to you guys and, and looking at the chat, and uh, there's a, a, an old friend of mine, uh, Marilyn Ryan, and you talk about how, and hi, Marilyn, uh, you, you, you talk about how how life happens, right? I mean, that uh, John Lennon quote, which apparently he didn't make up, but he's famous for it, you know, life's what happens when you're busy making other plans, and uh, I, too, uh, did not set out to be a musician. I don't know, I think I decided I was going to be a doctor when... When they say at five years old, what are you going to be when you grow up? And you have to make a decision. It has to be one of these things. So I chose doctor and uh, didn't do too well in physics and calculus and biology and chemistry and college. And that was the end of that after one semester. But in this long process for me, and I'd love it if you guys could share how you got into it. Uh, for me, it was piano lessons at five years old, listening to my brother, who's three years older. So he started at six, I was three, so I started to hear it. You hear the Louis Armstrong records. My dad played classical music. You hear this stuff. Uh, I got the piano gave me the background of understanding, you know, where it's at, how the chords are made, where the bass, the treble, that whole thing. Uh, my dad taught me a couple chords on the ukulele, Chris, uh, and just, I mean, uh, four or five chords. Uh, I wasn't thinking I'm going to rule the world. It was just a lot of fun, especially trying to get the, get the uke in tune with those little baby ukes. But, you know, you work like crazy because when it's in tune, like you said, Jack, it sounds so good. And so <laughs> later on, and my, my mother at one point said, when I was going into ninth grade, she said, uh, I want you to take an instrument in the high school band. I said, well, Mom, I'm going to play football. And she goes, and which I did, and I actually got to be pretty good. And she said, well, we'll see about that. But meanwhile, I want you to take an <laughs> instrument, pick any instrument you want. So I wanted to play the tuba because my favorite record as a kid was Tubby the Tuba. But I thought that's too big. So I chose the baritone horn, which is like a small tuba, same range as a trombone. And I played that for a year in, in, in the concert band. And then I, I loved what the tuba, one tuba, <laughs> was playing behind me. I liked those parts so much. So I asked the band director, can I switch to tuba? And he said, yeah. So that was like the whole bass thing for me. And I've always loved bass, and I sang bass in the, in the choir. But between junior and senior year, I went to a camp in the Poconos. And I met a counselor, Marilyn Ryan. And she was a Philadelphia folky. And she played guitar, of course. And she showed me a couple chords on the guitar, which I could relate to because I knew a couple chords in the ukulele. It's the same shape, just add the bottom strings. That was easy for me. I'm a bass guy. So I learned a couple chords. I learned a simple little strum. And I went home and I told my band director. And he said, hey, we've got this old Martin guitar been sitting in the closet. Nobody's been playing it. You can have it for your <laughs> senior year. And now I had a guitar, I learned some more chords, and that kind of got me started so that a couple of years later when I met a guy named Jerry Donahue, a wonderful guitar player who was my roommate in another college, and he started jamming, I borrowed a friend's guitar, I started playing with him, I went to the bass notes, he said, hey, where'd you learn how to do that? And I said, I, I just do it, I don't know, it's just natural. He said, well, you're a natural bass player, we gotta get you a bass. So we did, this is in Germany in 1964, got me a bass for $12.50. We all played out of the same amplifier, and that was my first experience playing rock and roll. And 
<laughs> I, I, I never went back because the doctor thing didn't work out. And so one thing led to another. <laughs> and so thank you, Marilyn Ryan. If it weren't for you, I wouldn't be here knowing these people and uh, having a life that's uh, been, been quite wonderful. So that's my story. <laughs> and I'm sticking to it. So Marilyn is here tuned into the show? She is tuned into the show, yes. Yeah, she, uh, she lives in, uh, I think, in Tucson. So that's, uh, that's really nice all these years later. Man, it's amazing. We're still I'm alive. grateful for the Marylands in all of our lives. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you, it's, uh, yeah they, I, call them, I call them points of destiny, Jack. You know, it's uh, those things that just kind of <laughs> turn you around. Maria, how did you, you know, with the, all the jug band stuff and everything, how did you get involved in that? I mean, you didn't set out to be in, a musician. In the jug you? band or into music originally? Well, well uh, originally, I, I don't know anything about you bef really before the jug band, I mean, and I don't know what your Would first you instrument. Like Would you like to? I would. That's why I'm kind of sort of hinting and asking. Yeah. Okay. Well, I first, I, I just was, can remember from a very little girl really being drawn to music. And my mother, I'm, a, I'm of, of Sicilian, you know, I'm a little uh, Italian American little girl growing up in Greenwich Village in New York City. And my mother always tried to play classical music. There was a station, WQXR, and all they played was classical music. And to a little girl, it just sounded so gloomy and so kind of ponderous and ominous to me. But she had a younger sister, my Aunt Katie, who uh, loved what she called cowboy music, which was what we would call, you know, early country and Western. So... I often went and stayed with her because my grandmother would mind me while my mother worked. She was a teacher. So my Aunt Katie, my mother taught five languages, but Aunt Katie sold lingerie at Bloomingdale's, which was way more glamorous as far as I was concerned. And I idolized her. And as she was getting dressed every morning, she'd be tuning in this cowboy music station from New Jersey. And um, so at the age of five, I was listening to Hank Williams, Hank Thompson, Hank Snow, a lot of guys named Hank, Hank. and <laughs> Kitty Wells and, you know, Ernest Tubb and Red Foley, all those original, wonderful uh, country and Western artists. And, um, and when my aunt came home from work, she'd get out of her fancy clothes and throw on an old robe and light a cools, crack a beer and play very fractured honky tonk piano and so i can actually remember the first song i ever sang was it wasn't god who made honky tonk angels by kitty wells which was her uh mm. answer to hank williams writing i didn't know god made honky tonk angels so anyway mm. there at five years old i was yodeling away and um just loved that kind of music. And my mother fussed and fussed about it and said, I want her to grow up to be refined. Stop playing that music for her. But it was too late. And so that was my first love, country and Western music. And then as um, I grew up, I uh, started listening to, you know how there's always a really cool black music station at the very tip of the dial. They usually would only give them, you know, four watts of power, but <laughs> I would tune in and was listening to early R&B, you know, Muddy Waters um, and uh, all those great early, early um, R&B artists. And then that kind of morphed. I was kind of listening as it morphed into rock and roll. And then I discovered Alan Freed on, on WINS in New York City and, and started, you know, was just crazy about Elvis and all the artists of that day, Little Richard, Fats Domino and so forth. And so in junior high school, I started uh, an all girls doo-wop group with three Puerto Rican girls called the Cameos. And mm. we um, sang at assemblies. We, we just did four part harmony. Nobody played any instruments. But uh, then in high school, I went to a high school in another, uh, another neighborhood and hooked up with three girls from the Bronx and we formed another girls do up called the Cashmere's. We thought that sounded very classy. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah. We, I actually wrote some songs, but we also did a lot of covers of songs that were popular in the day. And uh, we actually lied to our parents 
told them we were going to the library to do a book report. And then <laughs> we'd, we had our cashmere outfits in our locker. We would put on tight white sweaters, black skirts, tight black skirts. And we sewed with black ribbon of C for cashmere on the front of our sweaters. And off we'd go, we'd get in the subway and uh, go down to the area of New York known as Tin Pan Alley over there on Broadway in Midtown. And we would just go like into the Brill building and just look at the, look at the um, directory by the elevator and look up all the records, uh, record companies and publishing companies that were in the building and just start at the top and just burst into the office and say, hi, we're the cashmere. When I think of it now, I can't, I can't believe the chutzpah we had to do that. But anyway, we eventually actually got a record deal. And um, on the same as way, the as the Chantels and the, pardon? As the cashmere. you say? We, we recorded with, we did some backup work with Jerry Butler, who was a soul artist at the time. Mm -hmm. But when my, pan, when my mother found out that I hadn't been at the library doing book reports all this time, uh, she, uh, you know, we were underage, so we couldn't sign the contract and they had asked all the parents to come and, you know, sign the contract. My mother just threw a big fit and went down there and told them what she apparently burst into the office and said, you're not going to make a white slave out of my daughter. And uh, to this day, I'm not quite sure what a white slave is, but she saved me from that fate. And I was just mortified, disappointed. I was just so upset. But interestingly enough, right around that time, the really cool R&B, early rock and roll started getting kind of whitewashed and co-opted by, you know, they, they shipped Elvis off to Germany and then tried to replace him with Pat Boone and, <laughs> um, you know, and Fabian. And so the, the right. music I loved was getting way, you know, watered down. But at that very same time, I noticed that right in my backyard, practically, because I lived in Greenwich Village, this whole other musical movement was starting. Something that my dear friend John Sebastian uh, jokingly refers to as the folk scare of the 60s. And uh, what was happening was that people in the urban north were were, were discovering uh, all this wonderful roots music. I mean, they called it folk music. I like to call it roots music. You know, so pretty soon I was listening to old timey fiddle music, Appalachian music, bluegrass music. I was actually singing lead in a bluegrass quartet with uh, David Grisman uh, when his mom was still bringing him to rehearsals and so forth. And so I was playing, singing bluegrass blues. I got, I, when I first heard Bessie Smith, I went, that's what I want to be when I grow up. And I learned some of her tunes. So that's how I got immersed in music. And although I made a feeble attempt to go to college, uh, I didn't get past sophomore year because music just pl plucked me out of school. And next thing I knew, I was in a, the Even Dozen Jug Band with my friends John Sebastian and uh, David Grisman and a whole bunch of other very talented people. And from that, I ended up, uh, we went out, we, we went to check out our competition that Jim Queskin Jug Band. And I saw this uh, handsome blue eyed guitar player, blues singer named Jeffrey Muldar. And I thought he was pretty cool. And well, you can see where this is going. I um, ended up, uh, going up to Cambridge Mass to be with him. And in a couple of months after being there, they one of the members quit and the Jim Queskin asked me to join the Queskin Jug Band. So there, that was just the beginning of a many a musical adventure. And that's uh, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, wow. It's, it's funny how it happens, you know. It, just, it, it all seems to start from the music that you hear you know, and what you were attracted yeah, to. Yeah, like he's somebody's, Jeffrey Muldor's brother played him a lot of early jazz, Big Spiderbeck and so forth. And that, that kind of got him excited. You know, and we all have some relative or some person we admire who played a certain record or something. And that's all it takes. If, you, if, it's, if that's meant to be your path, you know it. For sure. 
Well, I, I, I don't know what it says for the kids today in terms of the kind of music they're hearing on the radio, but, uh, you know, hopefully some of the, some of the other stuff filters through and, you know, some of the, some of the good stuff remains. I hate to be negative, but <laughs> by the way, Maria, uh, Somebody suggests on the chat that the C that you guys had, the C on your sweaters, yeah. st stood for chutzpah. Chutzpah, that was <laughs> it. Chutzpah and cashmere. Yeah. <laughs> there you Later go. I you... met, one time I met Carol King and we, we figured we might have easily have passed each other in the halls or the elevator of the Brill building because it was right at the same time she was wow. she was she was already working professionally turning out fabulous tunes and hits there but that's well you, uh, got, well you guys sure did have a lot of hoots but I'm just going into the Brill building itself and saying you know what I'm just to to explore you know that's that's amazing yeah. Yeah, when I think that I would never have that nerve now, but luckily I just sort of, you know, and I when 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 all of us in the sort of the folk scene that was emerging in 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 New York City and and other hot spots too, Cambridge, Mass was one, and Berkeley, Berkeley, California was another. There were certain kind of epicenters <clears throat> of this movement, and uh, I know as far as myself and the people I was playing music with and exploring all this different music, we didn't sit around thinking, let's, you know, the idea of even making a record was something almost mythically unattainable to us. We were doing it for the pure love of it. We were just following, we were magnetized toward it. And, mm -hmm. um, and I still am. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know I mean, you having, were. And ending up making recordings was just, sort of a byproduct of, of the passion passionate path we were on yeah well you say, did you say you made Thinking for me anyway for, for how many records you say 40 how many uh this let's get happy together is my 43rd album unbelievable wow that, that's just ridiculous <laughs> i mean it's fantastic congratulations wow what a, what a body of work to leave behind you know that's incredible yeah. Well, and, and yeah. hopefully still have some ahead, not just behind. Yeah. Well, uh, you told me uh, about this other song. That I know that you really haven't been a songwriter. Uh, not since you... the Brill Building days. When, once Bob Dylan showed up on the scene, that kind of changed the bar. It made it so high, I, I pretty much gave up ever thinking of writing a song. Well, uh, Alice and I watched uh, watched that uh, documentary. Uh, what's it, what's it called? Uh, no Direction Home. Yeah. Uh, and and you're all over it. I I didn't realize you were so much a part of that that scene. But I mean, I I love the uh, the remembrance you have and 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 of him and and of that of that whole time. And and it, it pretty it, those of you who haven't watched it, it, it's pretty cool. It's a uh, uh, Yes, it's the whole just, movie it, is cool. They, they I, apparently I'm the go-to person when someone's doing a documentary or a, a an article or a book or whatever about those times because I'm one of those rare people that were not only in the '60s but apparently I still remember them. So that's why I end up getting interviewed a lot. I yeah, hope that well, continues because people tell me, I, you know, well, you you tell such great stories. You should. You should write a book, and I, I always say, yeah, yeah, when I'm not so busy making music. But I'm now I'm thinking, well, the years are creeping up. Maybe I better get to that book while I still remember what happened. Hey, I would I would second that, and I would suggest uh, that maybe because you're such a good speaker, and just just the way it flows out of you, rather than sitting down with a you know computer typewriter write it, just you know speak it into you know and to think a different situation and have somebody transcribe it for you. But I think it'd be a great book. It'd be a wonderful idea. Well, I'm, what, I'm, I'm going to start it soon, I promise. Good. Well, what I was leading to is that uh, you haven't been a songwriter, but you recently wrote a song from the pandemic that you shared with me, and I know you wanted to share it with the folks out there. Can you yeah, tell us a little well, bit about um, that? Yeah, I, 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 um, I got my second shot, I think it was like last April, and so I got my second vaccination and I left 
the place and got in the car and started to drive and felt this rush of exhilaration and liberation and joy. And I realized that what a heavy, you know, what a heavy cloud we've all been living under with this, with this awful, you know, pandemic and the, you know, the, the disease itself and all the other repercussions that are tearing the country apart and just the, the fear of getting it basically. So I'm driving along and I'm feeling this liberated joy. And I started singing spontaneously, vaccinated and I'm ready for love. And I just, you know, and I kind of just, I rolled back the sunroof and just was, just hollering and having a good time. And I kind of chuckled at myself and went about my business. But the next morning, the song came back into my head and I wouldn't leave. So I called my guitar player, Craig Caffel, and I said, hey, I got a great title and a great hook. Come on over and help me write the song. So he did. And, um, and then we did a video of it. And um, it's gotten, and we put it out there, and it's gotten a lot of great response. It's been played on the radio a lot, and whenever I play it live, people just spontaneously start singing the chorus with me. So it's a, a song for our times. Yeah. Well, can we can we see that video? And apologies to the anti-vaxxers out there. No ones yet and when the whole world got shut down I had to stay home no more running around it's been so long since I've been on a date but the time is coming and I just can't wait cause I'm vaccinated and I'm ready for love I've been praying to the heavens above please let me someone feet apart Does it make it easy to share your heart Stuck in a bubble now it's about to burst My heart is aching and the pain is the worst I sheltered in place just like I knew I should Now I'm gonna get some loving while the getting is good Cause I'm vaccinated and I'm ready for love
Oh, you're a songwriter. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Wow. Pretty sexy video, too. Well, that was the idea. I thought if, if, if trying to keep your grandmother safe and trying to keep from getting it yourself and all these other perfectly good reasons to get vaccinated didn't work, maybe the idea of being able to, you know, get some love in after all this time would, would be the thing that would motivate people. Yeah. It would motivate me. <laughs> I don't doubt it. I don't doubt. That's great. Thank you. I'm glad we could play that. Jack, haven't Hi. heard from you for a while, man. I'm, I'm, I'm right here. Yeah. Hey, I would uh, love to make a, a request of yours. You've got a, uh, a, wonder, a wonderful song that uh, uh, it goes through so many things just about the, uh, uh, it, it's biblical and it's psychological and it's uh, topical and it's a lot of fun and it's political and it's, 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 and it's musical. Just one of those, you know what song I'm talking about? Um, when you said political, you lost me there. Cause I don't oh, I, well, I mean, anytime you talk, talk about subjects that, uh, that might be the least bit taboo, you know what I'm talking about? The one with Isaac in it and Abraham. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, my story of my modern take on Isaac and Abraham, which is the one biblical tale that really pissed me off the most. And how's that? Well, I mean, the story kind of tells it all, you know, I mean, Abraham takes this kid up the hill and doesn't tell him what he's going up there for and uh, ties him up and is about to sacrifice him. And then just before he does, you know, God says, hey, nope, uh, just, just kidding. kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so he saves Isaac's life. And so in my take is that Isaac, because of this traumatic experience, just went completely to pieces. So um, I just wrote a song based on uh, this biblical tale, one of the ones which was preached heartily to me by my grandmother from Pleasant Hill, South Carolina, who tried desperately to make a, make a Christian out of me, I think. I think she was really trying to make a Baptist out of me. She didn't want to make a person a good person of me. She wanted to make a good Baptist of me. And so that's one of the stories that I had to put up with and I begged to differ with her about, which you couldn't do that. This was Northern South Carolina, 19, 1950. You don't, you don't argue with your grandmama from that part of the country when it comes to biblical tales. But I'll play this song for you if you like to hear it. It's a little bit on, on the semi-jazz side, you know. So. Help me, Dr. Simon. A lonely man am I. My name is Isaac Abramson, am I doomed to wonder why? I can't hold down a good job, I've angered all my friends. My wife and children left me and they won't accept a man. My life has been frustrated by love that never lasts. And a mind that roams in circles since that dark day in my past. The doctor eyed me carefully and saw my trembling hand. He said, tell me of your childhood and how you became a man. I said I always was a good boy And I did all I was told My family well respected And my lineage solid gold And my father was a giant Among his stellar peers His mind and health unfailing Despite his hundred years but my troubles are as legion, as grains of ocean sand. 
I feel like someone stricken by an unseen hand. One day, the clouds came over and blotted out the sun. My father took me walking, but his mind had come undone. I said, Father, Father, tell me, why do you wield a knife? He said, you wouldn't understand, my boy, but I must take your life. And then the old man rose to kill me, but he stopped and looked around as if he'd heard a mountain speak or some other world sound. He said, my children will be legion as grains of ocean sand if I'll just do the bidding of an unseen hand. My children will be legion as grains of ocean sand if I'll just do the bidding of an unseen hand. Dr. Simon said, there's an oasis in the desert and there's an island in the sea, but they're only for the chosen few, not the likes of you and me. And the unseen hand is silent, so if you're looking for a sign, on earth as is in heaven, boy, your guess is good as mine. Oh, help me, Dr. Simon, must I fail in all I try? A laughing man I'll never be, am I doomed to wonder why? Take that, Abraham. Yeah, Jack. <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty heady folk, stuff. Folk music, right? Yeah, right. No, yeah, that's I was I was, I was happy to be able to play jazz and classical music in the days, and that gave me the flavor of chords like that that are completely non-folky, but uh, it also keeps a little variety in my life. Like a minor sixth is in there somewhere, I think. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, anyway. I don't think a minor six is in there. That's a minor six. There is on my new album, though. You just wait. Yeah. This is a minor six. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, there was. That's a minor six. Oh, We're gonna good. get technical here, free forward. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I couldn't help it. I couldn't help it. Chris, you got anything to follow that with? Mm, sure. I knew it. This is a song I wrote when I was um, down in New Orleans doing that um, retrospective album. And Goody told me, he says, you got to write a song for this. And I said, no, I don't. And he said, uh, yeah, you do. And I, I thought I was just going to have to do all, a whole selection of stuff from the catalog, you know. He made me write another one. So I wrote a song about what it was like. <clears throat> People used to ask me all the time, what was it like? How did growing up in New Orleans affect your music? And it's a question that I don't know how to answer because <laughs> I never think about it. It's like asking a fish what he thinks about water. So this is called What I Do. <laughs> Down in Nola where we listen Some of that and some of this And keys beyond the normal range Everything's a little strange It's mostly just a place to be Got to leave it for you See it sticks to you 
I left before you did me in Down and dirty, don't begin To talk about my state of mind All I wanted was to find a way to get between That funky and that play cleaner too Hey, forget about my feelings, I don't mind But don't forget that second line They say, can't you come on out and play? Let's see what you got today. How you make it sound that way? I never know just what to say. It's beans and rice and sticky nights. They too fade to keep it in the groove. Just comes out that way, won't go back in Like gumbo running down your chin Feel it's just a little thin Slick as glass, dark as sin With downbeats on the upside To take you for a ride, make it move Oh, I see they say Well, no wonder It's a miracle You ain't six feet under Fish don't understand the water, they just do the things they ought to. Birds don't understand the air, they don't even know it's there. They don't have a clue, but just like me, they do the things they do. It's what I do, it's what I do, it's what I do. Let me let me just say to uh, you folks out there, uh, if you uh, if you're kind enough or generous enough or silly enough to uh, send me uh, a birthday present of any sort, I'd certainly like to be able to share the wealth with my friends who've been uh, so kind to come on here. So uh, a couple people asked, you know, how they can uh, contribute uh, to some of the people on here, uh, and that's a way you can do it. Uh, just keep it simple. But I think everybody'd appreciate it. You know, we, we do what we love. We love what we do. But we got to pay the rent just like you. <laughs> I just came up with that. I like that. It's kind of good. It's kind of cool. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Jack. Keep your day job. <laughs> <laughs> this is my day job. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, can you guys stick with us for just a little bit longer? Is that cool? Sure. Sure. Maria, are you falling asleep yet? Not yet. That was well, so I, wonderful. I'm enjoying this. Oh, I'm glad you are. Well, I'd like to bring in my friend Alice Howe, who's uh, she's not in her seventies, as no, as she you. Died. She's hard, <laughs> a, a long way from it, but uh, but she is an old soul, and uh, and she's uh, and she's got some some thoughts and all this. I keep trying. I, I keep trying to tell her every once in a while. She gets depressed with the music business and says. <laughs> says, you know, I, I, if only I was around in the 70s, I'd say, yeah, if only you were, but you weren't. And uh, things are different now. And she says, but, um, you know, f screw it, maybe I'll just go back to school. And I'm going, well, I mean, yeah, that's you can do that, but, you know, you got a gift, and, you know, wh why don't you give it a couple more years to see what happened and then go back to school. So... Uh, Quit outing I, me, Freebo. I'm, I'm just kind of outing her you a little bit. You but can't just air my my darkest moments here. No, on. but I just keep trying to trying right. to say that. I mean, you know, here's like some inspiration. I think at some point, you know, I think uh, we're some of us are born to do this, and if we don't know it when we're born, you know, it kind <laughs> kind of comes to us at some point. And uh, hey, you guys, you know, say hello. 
It's it's such an honor to be here. Hi, everybody who's watching. Thank you so much for inviting me on, Freebo. You didn't give me any warning. I, was, I didn't give you warning. I was so I'm enjoying being the camera guy. I uh, I was just relaxing over there in the corner. But hi, Maria. Hi, Chris. Hi, Jack. So great to see you guys and hear you. I've been listening and just enjoying every minute. That's good. Well, I was thinking that maybe if uh, if you could play a tune and I'll play bass and then sure. let me play a tune where you play bass, and then we'll get back to these guys for another tune to peach if we can. Okay. Do that? Sure. Uh, as you know, I'm tuned down a whole step, but here, you, yeah, I know you can figure this out. I think so. I'm a professional. You are a professional. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Look like things I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you guys, don't worry. I'm not going back to school. <laughs> So, Alice, I want to ask you, so what, 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 why don't you chime in? <laughs> yeah, and they're all like, no. Don't go back to school. Don't no, worry. No. This is just a, this is like a dark night of the soul conversation that Freebo's been. Well, I think it's interesting. Maria, privy to. Well, Maria talked about maybe going back to school at one, and she said she made it up to her sophomore year, and it was like, no, music took over. Bonnie, um, I met Bonnie. She was a freshman at Radcliffe, now Harvard. And then she said, no, nope, I, I got to go to music. And you graduated from Smith, but you don't have to go to graduate school. Okay. We don't have to talk about this anymore. But t <laughs> tell, t tell me your thoughts about us 70-year-olds still doing it and oh you being gosh. far from that. What my are your thoughts? thoughts about yeah. you 70-year-olds. No, not my <laughs> thoughts about a 70-year-old. <laughs> well, I feel honored and so fortunate to have friends of all ages, um, everywhere from my four-year-old nephew to you, Freebo, and all the folks on this show, and I consider you all friends, and it just makes my life more interesting and rich to know people at all stages on the spectrum, because um, we all have different perspective and parts of our story to share, so hey, I mean, I love hanging out with you guys. That's that's all I have to say about, about this party. Yep. Um, <laughs> for me. you know, I think, yeah, some of the most interesting and wonderful conversations I can remember in my life are with people who are older than me from my grandmother way back to, to now. So, you know, we all have something to say. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just turned 31. I feel pretty good about it. I think by the time I'm 70 something, I won't say exactly. I know we're not saying exactly. We're, we're being vague. I'll be gone. We're saying the seventies <laughs> and that's fine. Mm -hmm. Um, by the time I'm your guy's age, I hope I'm still doing it. Me too. Me too. I hope I'm still singing. This is, uh, kind of in the shot, but that's, that's okay. okay. <laughs> As the cameraman. <laughs> how's, how's that? <laughs> Thank you. Capos where you want them? Uh, no, so. they are not. Are you in some kind of weird tuning right now? No, I'm in regular tuning, but I don't, I don't think you're in the right key, though. Oh, yeah, you're right. Is it things I'm not saying? Yeah. This is a song that Freebo and I recorded last summer um, in Muscle Shoals, Alabama at Fame Studios. And it'll be on my new record. Oh yeah, he's wearing the shirt. Should be out hopefully this fall. So this is this is a new song. It's called Things I'm Not Saying. It's all quiet now At the end of the day I unpacked my suitcase I put the dishes away It's not hard to stay busy 
I got so much to do If I stop I'll get caught With the things that I'm not saying to you I heard you've been traveling I heard you're doing all right That you got some new girlfriend Moving on with your life But I'm still full of questions Do you wonder too? Do you still save a spot For the things that I'm not saying to you? But I a new car and I moved to LA there's just something about it I don't care what they say I can't walk in the sunshine on the days I feel blue the best place I got to escape what I'm not saying to you. But I block it out and I play pretend and I write you letters that I can't send. I still know And I needed to grow I ain't telling you nothing You don't already know But I still keep you with me We both know it's true the things that I'm not saying to you. No, I haven't forgot all the things that I'm not saying to you. Beautiful. Great song. Thank you. Yeah, that was fun recording that in Muscle Shoals and uh, we had a great band and uh, uh, did a little horn arrangement to that mm -hmm. just to throw it in like second verse and nice little, the old trumpet and saxophone, kind of like a stax type mm -hmm. of thing. But uh, yeah, yes. can't wait, can't wait for that to come out. Yeah, me too. It is a nice song. Great lyrics. Hey, yeah, thank you. Thank that you. hook line is really great. <laughs> I love that. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, that, thank you. Uh, I was pleased with that one. <laughs> I bet you were. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking, you know, what you said, Frivo, about just like getting down about the the business side of things. It's like the music is easy. Like that part, that's where like the heart and soul is. It's just like trying to find a way to make it work, you know, as, as one's way of life and like how to make a living at it. And I mean, you can be like Jack, you could be totally under the radar and not care, you know, if and anyone's Jack ever heard of you, living. which yeah. is like beautiful. And I kind of wish I could be like you, <laughs> Jack, in a way, but I, you know, I can't, um, you know, I want people to hear, I want, I want to be known for my songs. And so there's a challenge there of like, how do you just do it for the love of it and still, 
you know, find a way to make it happen. So I don't know. Maybe you guys could enlighten me. <laughs> <laughs> Perseverance. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, what was it Joni Mitchell says that uh, if if you're really good, people will eventually find out, right? Yeah. She did say that. Which means it goes away. You said, Chris, if you got to keep doing it, right? <laughs> That's what the I Ching says. Perseverance furthers. Mm. 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 My parents used to talk about the I Ching. <laughs> well, I'm, <laughs> I'm your parents' <laughs> age, so just keep that in I, mind. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's all the same. We all are. Ilk. <laughs> generation yeah. well hell i i got a song that's just a uh, perfect a perfect segue for that oh you better yeah. say and, and you get to play bass on this alice uh-oh yeah all right let let's see if we that, can trade let me have the guitar back we gotta you gotta make sure we don't cross the wires here yeah, i think we do it there long enough for you to go What are we going to play for you, Bo? We're going to play a song called If Not Now, When. Mm. Cool. I think that, you know, it, for everything, for you, Maria, for, for writing your book, right? If Not Now, When. For me, exactly. writing my, for me writing my book. Uh, I just did a cruise with Kate Taylor. It was actually a 70s, it was called Rock and Romance, 70s Music cruise on and we went around the Caribbean and Kate is a wonderful wonderful person and an artist and a wonderful singer and has a great spirit and her new album's called Why Wait and uh, you know that's if not now when I mean I think it's we all got to just and 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 Miss Alice I was 31 when he told me when he mentioned you were 31 I said Oh, to be 31 again. But that's how old I was when I made my very first album on Warner Brothers with Freebo doing the honors yep. on the bass. Yep. And so it's, you, you got it all ahead of you. You go, girl. Daria, thank you. Thank you so much. It means a lot coming from you. Thank you. I just made Freebo do a little video today. Maybe some of you saw it, but I, I had him, I made, <laughs> I made a little reel for him on Instagram of him holding up the, uh, the record that he made with you, Maria, and just pointing to it and kind of as oh, a little yeah. promo for the show. I, I had him sit there and say, this is me 50 years ago. <laughs> and it's great. It's cute. I actually put your song Midnight at the Oasis in the background and it's just kind of a fun little wow. 15 seconds. Go play. figure a song about a camel and people right. still love it almost 50 years later. So <laughs> well, it's free book with that gorgeous, sexy, undulating bass line on there. and The rest was wow. history. Hey, say that again, Maria. Would you <laughs> like the way that sounded? <laughs> I don't know if I can. I certainly am not going to be undulating over here during this song. I'm going to be just like plunking along. <laughs> Uh, sexy undulating bass. I love that, man. I'm going to take that with me. That's great. <laughs> okay, rocking out a little bit. If not now, when? Which, by the way, is the name of the uh, name of the album uh, that it's on. My last record. I showed Alice a couple couple little bass things here, so we'll groove along with you, and we have a little surprise for you in the middle of it. Ready? When I was a young boy, I had these dreams, and time didn't matter, or so it seemed. Now I'm still a dreamer, like I was back then, but time keeps screaming, it's not now when. Hundreds of heartaches and broken down plans. So many what ifs and what if I can't? My fear held me captive, caged in a pen. Oh no, cause I 
know it's true I make this vow I'm swearing that My time is now If not now when Doubting and blaming It's time to let them go Cause this healing journey go so slow but I hear these voices again and again they keep on calling if not now when if not now when if not me who I can't pretend Time is now, if not now when. Sing it to me, Alice. Well, I pulled out of Pittsburgh, rolling down that eastern seaboard. I got my diesel wound up, and she's running like never before. There's a speed zone. That's a good one, Freebo. Thanks, Maria. I saw Jack strumming along with that. You played that with me many times. Many times, yeah. Give me some good stuff. You just couldn't hear it. 
What's that, Chris? Taj, did you ever hear Taj do six days on the road? Yes. Oh, yeah. In fact, oh, my God. Six days of Pondy Road. And I'm not going to make Monday. it home Monday tonight. Night. I know. Chris, I actually, that was the only version I knew. And oh, really? And when, when Freebo <laughs> said, well, do you know the original? I was like, oh, I didn't know that there was an original. And so I had never heard of Dave Dudley before. <laughs> but, man, oh, my God, his voice is... <laughs> All of those versions are that old great. trucker thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah Taj is, is is great. Yeah. And I gotta say, Chris, you know, you're gonna be at the Kate Wolf Festival this year, and so is yeah. Taj, and so are we. All right. And I'm so right. excited. That would be a yes. good get together. That'd be great. It'll be so saying. cool. Yeah. yeah. If you think one. I'm happy, baby, baby, you're right. Yes. <laughs> 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 no, totally. That's true. Oh my God! Just to also prove that my parents are of of your kind, all y'all. My parents <laughs> walk down the aisle to Taj a record of him playing. Uh, uh, gonna move up to the country and paint my mailbox oh, blue. Oh, right. <laughs> blue. Oh, Which it. I always thought was just like, wow, you guys, that is bold. Just walking down <laughs> the aisle to that song, like man. <laughs> that's just... true. Speaking of Taj. I, I um, just found out that the Blues Music Association is uh, in, in Memphis. I go every year when I'm nominated for something. And, um, and even sometimes when I'm not, because it's just so much fun. And uh, mm -hmm. they have, just like in Hollywood, they have, they put stars in the sidewalk. In Memphis on Beale Street, they put uh, a big blue music note and embedded in the sidewalk with, various you know legends and so forth and i've uh, had the privilege of, of putting memphis minis note into the sidewalk and then a few years later gus cannon who uh, was one of the great jug band originals and this year they're they're going to give taj his own musical note oh, as great. as well he deserves on beale street so that's going to be a very special celebration oh that's fantastic lord knows he He's just such a national treasure. Oh, he really that, is. That's wonderful yeah. to hear. I'm happy to hear and that. And he, he's still killing it, you know, whether yeah, it's by himself is. or his trio or his big band. It's just yeah. wonderful stuff. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Maria, would you just, just we, since it's my birthday, <laughs> would you give me just a very small birthday present? Of what? I, I know. She said, uh-oh, uh-oh, what? Would you just sing one verse of just a cappella of Midnight at the Oasis? Any key you want. Only because this is you, Freebo. <laughs> Let's see. And of course, God knows what key I'm going to start it in. Yeah. Midnight at the Oasis, send your camel to bed. Shadows painting our faces, traces of romance in our heads. Heaven's holding a half moon, shining just for us. Let's slip off to a sand dune real soon and kick up a little dust. Come, <laughs> Come on. on. Cactus is our friend. He'll point out the way. Come on till the evening ends, till the evening ends. You don't have to answer. There's no need to speak. I'll be your belly dancer, prancer, and you can be my sheep birthday boy <laughs> that's it <laughs> i think we all should sing Rebo happy birthday though yes. how about that okay. is that too corny no it's not but we'll, we'll, pro we'll probably be out of sync we'll all we be out of it. sync but man <laughs> oh that, that, that'll be interesting go ready one Let's wait wait, wait here's a key Let's see what happens. Oh, key. happy birthday happy birthday, birthday to you, you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Freebo. Happy birthday to you.
now the most <laughs> important part. And anymore. <laughs> oh man. Good oh, idea, that, Maria. Oh, that, <laughs> that is that is wonderful. Wow. Thank you. Hey, can, can I share one more song with you guys? This is not a song that I wrote. This is so appropriate. You all know who Stephen Bruton was, right? Oh, yes. Stephen Dear Jack, did you, did, yeah, did you ever know Stephen? No. Brilliant don't songwriter know. out of yeah, Fort, Fort Worth, Texas. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, just a wonderful, just, I mean, he. I, I met him when I was playing with Bonnie as a duo when we met Maria, 71, 2, and 3. Uh, we were a duo, and uh, we did several shows with Chris Christopherson, and Chris was doing a duo with Stephen playing guitar, the same kind of guitar that you had, Chris, that Epiphone, uh, really Excellent. sweet guitar. There, but I got to play yours and his, and they're just wonderful guitar. Do you still have that guitar, by the way? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. But, I mean, I and he, Stephen was, I think, was just kind of starting writing songs, and apparently he... He learned a few things from from Chris, not not surprising, and 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 turned into. He's always an excellent guitar player and a very soulful guy, but he just uh, turned into a wonderful songwriter. And and uh, I heard heard him do this song on one of his records, and I just decided I really wanted to do it. And he actually does a, a kind of a duet with with Bonnie. And uh, so I, when I decided I wanted to do it, do my own arrangement of it. It's on my new record. In fact. A little bit of self-promotion here for you. Uh, pay, if you want to join my Patreon uh, for seven dollars, you can hear that too. My recorded version of that and Angel from Montgomery and some other stuff I'm going to put on there. The only places you can hear it. But I got Alice to sing uh, uh, a really beautiful harmony part with me. And uh, this song, it's such a. And I, I kind of feel like you have to be old, or at least older. No, you don't. Old to, older, <laughs> I'm here to tell you you don't have well, to be old. Well, that, well, it, well, you're an old soul, but you gotta yeah. have some, some appreciation. Your cover of, of this song that your patrons will hear made me weep, and it's been a while oh, since thank you. a song made me cry. So I appreciate that. Thanks a well, lot it, for you both. It's thank you. It, 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 <laughs> I'm glad I could do it just, but it speaks to the song. It's a wonderful song. Uh, it's called "Too Many Memories," and I, I, I'd, I'd love to share it with you guys these headphones out so I can hear what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> the balance okay? Can you hear anything all right? Yeah, it's I remember this town And the girl by my side And a love seldom found In this day and time And it gets melancholy Every now and again When you let your mind go And it drifts way back when Life plays its tricks Some cruel but fair And even a fool Can pretend that he don't care When there's too many memories one heart to hold and the future once bright now seems so distant and cold and the shadows grow long and your eyes look so old when there's too many memories for one heart to hold There are those moments And they just never fade 
Like the look in her eyes and the way the light played. God moved in that moment. And the angels all cried. And they gave you a memory that you'll have till you die. Another lesson you learn. And you don't dare forget What makes you grow old Is replacing hope with regret When there's too many memories For one heart to hold And the future once bright Now seems so distant and cold And the shadows grow long and your eyes look so old When there's too many memories For one heart to hold Song. What's that? Song. What was his name again? Stephen Bruton. Stephen, Stephen Bruton. B R U T O N. It's a new one to me. He produced uh, yeah, three no. of my records. <laughs> he was. Uh, I forgot right. that. I forgot. Really? That. That's oh right. Yeah. Yeah. He he was. Uh, did you ever hear him sing that song of his uh, day drinking? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> No, he's got <laughs> a great a sense killer. of humor. I mean, he's yeah. just uh, he 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 just make you make you laugh. You got up and then just. Tear your heart out, you know. Oh, that's the one of my before. favorites of his is one called "Kiss My Ass Till My Hat Pops Off." Pops off. off. Yeah. Kind of <laughs> on the other side of the spectrum. Yeah. <laughs> but I recorded one of his tunes called "Walk by Faith." It's really, I mean, he 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 was very funny and hip, and you know, kind of full of full of mischievous humor. But he, he always had a very spiritual. Um, insight in the, in the middle of those songs, you know. I mean, he was really great. We miss him. Miss yeah, him yeah, yeah. What about eight, nine years ago, died of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, he's great. Great body of work. It's. Uh, there, I mean, there are a few of those. Well, not a few. There are quite a few of those people out there. One of uh, mine and Alice's favorites, a guy named. Uh, you familiar with uh, Kenny, who used to work with Linda Ronstadt? What's, he, uh, what was his name? Oh, Kenny Edwards, yeah. Kenny Edwards, yeah. Yeah, and he, he was, was in also, the Stone he, he, Ponies. He was in Stone Ponies originally, and he was in Brindle, but, uh, you know, he, he pretty much, uh, he cast himself as a, as a support guy, as a bass player, and played with Linda and, and, and just really supported a lot of people. But uh, he, before he died, he died of cancer also about eight, nine years ago, for a similar time to Stephen. But he did two solo albums, if you ever get a chance so to hear good. them. Brilliant record, brilliant songwriting, mm -hmm. beautiful voice. Uh, another one of these guys, just very, very unknown, who, who should be really well known. But just, just killer, killer stuff. Amazing, you know. Well, I'll gosh. Uh, check that out. Yeah, yeah, Kenny Edwards. I'm not even sure where you can get them. Can you, can you hear them anywhere on? Uh, I think Alice? you can download them on like iTunes and stuff, yeah. I think you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. I think you can stream them too. Or I could mail you a CD, Maria. <laughs> I mailed one to my uncle. <laughs> no, you did? I did. No. Oh, well, where'd you find it? I. Shh. Oh. I made a copy. Well, you did. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, that's okay. Well, does anybody want to uh, want to play another song? Oh, hell no. 
I mean, you're all talking about God. We love what we do, man. We get, oh, no, that's just, come on, give it, give it, give it, give us another. Maria gave us midnight, and thank you for that, Maria. That's a best birthday present I could have gotten. That was really sweet. Thank you, Jack. You want to do another song, and then Chris? Sure. Search me. Now your crackle is gone, which is great. Shh. Oh, sorry. I wish you hadn't said that. Oh, damn. Yeah. You, um, I, I, I decided not to make up a list because you usually tell me what you want me to play. So um, what is it that you want me to play? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, I, 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 love, I love your song. I love your song, High Cotton. Yeah. You know that. And uh, I mean, to me, it's just a, it's a brilliant, I mean, it's really, it's, and it's his, about history and, and it's environmental and it's uh, uh, just, you know, the history of America and, and the South and just, I just love what you do with it. I love the, the, the way he uses a metaphor and, and musically what you do with it. It's just, to me, it's just a brilliant song. I, I'd love it if you share it. I don't think Maria's ever heard this one. Like. Sometimes when I play this song, it has a has a southernism in it that uh, people I didn't realize that not everywhere in the country do they refer to a dragonfly as a snake doctor. Um, but that's that's one expression that's used in the song. Cotton stands open to the morning Morning breaks loose from the night Night runs grieving down the basin The river takes a shine to the light Light lifts the heat from the pasture I love the warm feeling in my nose Dusty red bull swats a deer fly As he nibbles on the Cherokee rose Cotton, high cotton The more I see, the less I know The well runs deeper than the bucket goes Swing high, swing low High cotton Cotton says howdy to the melon Melon throws a shadow on the toad Toad spies a purple snake doctor And a sunbeam laying across the road the road used to lead through the cotton Before they turned the field into a mall Mall ran our store out of business And took a little family from us all Cotton, high cotton The more I see, the less I know the well runs deeper than the pocket goes. Swing high, swing low, high cotton. shelter to the weevil weevil gives breakfast to the shrike shrike must kill but does no evil ask the sparrow on the thorny spike cotton saw the land turn to madness a million souls buried in the clay 
freedom walks her fields in a sad dress in my Dixie home far, far away. Cotton, high cotton. The more I see, the less I know. The well runs deeper than the bucket go. Swing high, swing low, high cotton. Cotton. High cotton The more I see The less I know The well runs deeper Than the bucket goes Swing high Swing low Where's a poor boy to go Easy come Easy go High cotton Happy birthday, yeah. Freebo. Uh, thank you, Jack. We Couldn't had a great song. Couldn't afford so I give you a song. Mm. No, that's, that's, that's beautiful, man. And uh, you gave it to the world. Thank you, sir. Mm. That's what we do. Thank you so much. Chris. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, what you going to do for your last song, man? And I can't tell you how much I appreciate you guys, first of all, coming out and doing this. I mean, really, just I, I, I know we all use the word, it's an honor, but it is an honor. It really is an honor and a joy, and I love you guys as people, and I, I love you and respect you as musicians. You've all meant so much in my life, and to come out <clears throat> and do this and take all this time and stay this long, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just so grateful. I really am. Just a beautiful night, beautiful night of music and friendship and camaraderie and a lot of history, a lot of history. Hmm. Am I we love am I you, Freebo. What's that? We do love you, Freebo. I second that. Oh, thank you. I wanted to know if I could make a request of Chris without being too forward. I don't. If you had something planned. I did have something I, I was okay, thinking okay, about. Okay, planned, okay, okay. No, no, no. Maybe it's a, wait, maybe it's the same one. No, no, no. I don't want to. <laughs> you, do, you do what you do want to do. But I maybe. Don't, Maybe he could segue, segue from I'll one have, to the other. I, no, it's okay. Maybe he could turn into a medley. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when people do that to me, so I'm trying to be respectful of the fact that... Well, I'm trying to think of it. You know, one time I was... Um, back when, when music wasn't treating me so well and I had to actually work part-time... <laughs> <clears throat> I was working as a mason, or as a mason's helper, learning to be a mason. Trouble with masonry is even your mistakes weigh 500 pounds. You know, it's really one of the most wow. drudgery. <laughs> it's amazing. Wow. So I was sitting down in this cave of a basement, a field stone basement, trying to paint it. And, and I suddenly had this image that I was a caveman <laughs> painting on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> that was the line that started this song, but the song itself sort of goes through a bunch of stages, but the wall stays there. This is called Caveman. <laughs> Man, I had it all 
and I was very high in the order of things. Just one step and I'd spread my wings to fly. I would fly. Yeah, just one step, one step, and I'd spread my wings to fly. You know, when I was a liar, screaming at the wall, I never heard a whisper, I could not hear it all. I could only cry for pity of me And I never knew the truth might set me free Set me free Yeah, around we go, these faces show they leave Everyone seems ever real Each one is truly mine They never last But at the time It's how I feel How I feel Oh yes, each one is truly mine they never last, but at the time, it's how I feel, how I feel. When I was a dreamer, floating through the wall, nothing was forever, cause I could change it all. And I, could live with my heart on my sleeve I could have saved you so I do believe Do believe Oh yes I could have saved you so I could have saved you so I do believe Yeah, and then I was an old man Staring at the wall Looking for an answer Just to make sense of it all And I can safely say That if it comes my way It will not stay for long But I'll be on my way before it's gone Before it's gone Around we go, these faces show and they leave. Everyone seems ever real. Each one is truly mine, they never last, but at the time it's how I feel. How I feel. Oh yes, each one is truly mine They never last, but at the time it's how I feel Yeah, but when I was a caveman When I was a caveman I had it all I had it all <laughs> God, I'm, I'm sorry those days are over, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's great.
I mean, that's such a great thing. I mean, I learned from, from 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 all you guys and from some of the great songwriters. And like I said, I, you know, I'm 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 very young at it and I'm still still learning. Mm-hmm. But just the whole process of writing songs, where you, you know, you just it's complete creativity to me. I mean, you take an idea like looking at the wall and thinking about the paintings and. And you not only talk about it, put it in the words, but then you put music behind it, underneath <laughs> it. Really, I like to say as a as an emotional cushion, you know. And just the the result is just 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 stunning. Mm-hmm. You know, it's really, yeah. We're we're pretty lucky. Mm-hmm. By the way, uh, uh, I should say to you, Maria, you will be back. When are you going back to Mill Valley? I'll be back uh, next Monday. Why? Well, because uh, Alice and I are going to be opening for Chris Smither, that same Chris Smither right there, at, at the Freight and Salvage. On what day? Friday, Friday the 25th of March, I believe. Is that right, Alice? Yep. That's right. And, uh, and, well, and I'm going to be there. You better put me on the pest list. Uh, we <laughs> are, we are, I'm going to do that. Uh, we, I, I, I think we get one guest apiece, and you will be my guest. How's okay. that? Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll, be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. Oh, that, great! That'd be great. Yeah, and uh, it'd be great, great to see you. It. It so be yeah, I th- even more fun than this was to see you in <laughs> real, actual person. Absolutely, no, it'd be. Oh, goody! Very- that gives me something to look forward to. Good. Well, cool. I hope you have more than that to look forward to, but <laughs> I do. I have a tour of the Northwest coming up in April, oh. and oh, then really? I'm going back. And then I'm going back to my original homeland, uh, the you know New York, New England area this summer. So it's are you playing? Uh, it's there? so yeah. exciting! Uh, 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 it's so exciting to be thinking about playing live music regularly yes. again. So yes. you know, after all these years, it's not like oh, I've got to go on the road. It's like real people will be responding to me in the same yeah. room. So. It'll be fun, and I'll be responding to you guys next week with bells Great. on. Great. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Well, hey, there's, there's blessings in every curse, I suppose, and the whole thing with COVID Amen. has really, really given us appreciation of the, uh, to, I mean, first of all, to be able to see people's mouths smile, see them move. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, kind of, uh, maybe begin to understand what they're saying for those of us that are beginning to lose our hearing. Uh, it's nice to see the mouth moving like, oh, okay. That's, you know, okay, and, I can read his lips. <laughs> yes. And, I mean, have, have you all done shows where, you know, you do a show and the entire audience has masks on and you oh, can't yeah. tell people are liking it or not if everybody's just staring at you? <laughs> They're liking it. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. <laughs> Jack, where are you going to be? Where am I going to be? Um, this Saturday in Gainesville, Florida. Uh, all that information is on jackwilliamsmusic.com. This Sunday in Fort Lauderdale um, and then I got a week off I'm going to go and hang out with Florida artists at the Will McLean Festival in Dade City Florida and then Judy and I are going to drive post haste up to Baltimore um, for Reba's yeah I'm, I'm going to play for Reba um, Heyman's memorial concert I'm going to play by myself and I'm also going to accompany my friend Ronnie Cox and he and I have two other gigs up there to justify such a long detour. And uh, that's the, the week, the uh, weekend after this next one. Two weekends to hands. And all of that information is on jackgravesmusic.com. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's great. I, I, I wish I could be there for Reba. If you don't know a woman named Reba Heyman, and uh, her husband, Vic, who died about, oh gosh, 10 years ago. But they were uh, big patrons of the folk world. Uh, and patrons. they they really just uh, they put their money where their mouth was. And they, they love folk music. and uh, They used to run uh, my mailing list. <laughs> they did, Really? <laughs> oh, wow. Phil Maryland. Yeah. Yeah, well, she just passed, what, during this past year, I think, right? Yeah, very yeah, recently. That's right. they, she was, yeah. she was um, living in Florida. Mm-hmm. She had moved down there at least part time, and uh, yeah, she was posting till the end. She was attending all of the local Florida 
folk venues and festivals. She was at it till the very end. Yeah. Yeah, no, she was wonderful, and just she's just a great supporter. So I, I wish I could be there, but if you could somehow remember to whomever, just uh, bring a little bit of you know, say hello for me and condolences, regrets, and and uh, and thank yous, you know, because she was she was wonderful. Okay. Yeah, I appreciate that. And Chris, you're uh, where you're on is Chris, is Chris Smither dot com? Is that where people find out where you're going? Because I know you're going yeah, out this whole yeah, you know, Chris March Smither dot com. Um, uh, just plain Smither dot com gets you there too. Mm. And, I think and, I think Brand will probably Smither, put everything in the chat. Chris right. Smither okay. music on Facebook and and um, uh, I, you know it's the whole shooting match. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> you're about to go and do do a whole bunch of stuff, right? Yeah, I know they're well, doing the West Coast thing. Yeah, it starts up in Portland and then Seattle and then down with you guys in uh, in Berkeley. And, uh, and then you're coming the, down to McCabe's, right? Right, down to L.A. and then across to Tucson and then um, near Albuquerque. And I think it ends up in Austin. Uh, it's a nice cool. little swing. Great. Yeah, great. 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 And Maria, when do you say you're going to be in the East Coast during the summer? It's like starting late July, going into kind of at least mid-August, and then I'm going to... I lived in Woodstock for a while uh, after I, I lived in Cambridge, and so that that's kind of like my home turf. So even though I love California and I lived there for many years, in the, in the summer especially, it's so lush and green on the East mm -hmm. Coast, and so I'm really looking forward to it. And when the tour is over, I'm just going to go to Woodstock and hang with my peeps. So I, I'm looking forward to it. You have a place to stay. You don't still have a place there, do you? No, I wish. No, I wish I had kept my place, but I don't. But there's always a there's always some place for me to stay. So I look, hmm. you know, I have a lot of old friends that still live there. John Sebastian, Happy and Jane Traum, and uh, many other good souls that I know and love. Are you playing a colony there? I've been playing the Colony. I think I'm going to play the Bearsville Theater because somebody uh, recently bought it, right? it and completely refurbished it, spent a, a nice, juicy amount of money getting it all spruced up. And um, and they put, uh, I, I'm immortalized by a, a large portrait of myself that was, you know, when they take a photo and then they paint over it and so forth, uh, along with some other, Woodstock legends like um, Cindy Cash Dollar and Janice, although she didn't live in Woodstock, she she's sort of associated with it. And um, the gal from the B-52s and there's four giant portraits of us there. Yeah, so nice. I think we're going to be playing there. I, I played the Bearsville Theater in the past and, uh, you know, it's just like my my home. Yeah. No, we've heard about uh, a friend of ours, Jim Shea, who uh, actually uh, shot a whole bunch of uh, photos of Allison and actually shot six days, not in a row, six days at, at fame. We have a lot of uh, footage of that. The wonderful photographer did uh, Linda Ronsat album cover and Joni Mitchell, and uh, he's done some stuff with Sebastian, actually, uh, fairly recently, and uh, told us all about the Bearsville Theater and how it's be completely refurbished and put a lot of money into it. It's supposed to be a really cool venue. Really nice. It great. was cool before, but <clears throat> I can't wait to see the new improved version. Cool. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I think it's probably time to say, you know, good night. And uh, Brandon, we're, we're thinking about maybe doing a Zoom, but I think we pretty much covered it here since we've pretty much been on Zoom this whole time. And uh, I... I I want to thank uh, thank you, Brandon, for uh, really bringing this all together and uh, producing this thing and helping us with the technicalities. And and uh, I want to thank you, Alice, for helping me with my technicalities. I uh, thank you so Here much. For and you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And that. I want to thank my friend Jed for helping me. This is my first Zoom ever, and um, really? I. I so uh, so he, he came over and helped me get it all set up. So giving him a shout out. Yes, thank cool. you, Jen. And, and Maria, you look marvelous. Absolutely you. marvelous. You Isn't that what 
all that really counts. No. Yes. Thank well, you very much. Yes. Thank you so yeah. much. But I mean, particularly, not only just you and your count, but on Zoom, just to know that there you are, just your first so I Zoom, know. and you pulse the audition. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, thank you. Oh, great. Happy birthday, Freebo. Thank you. Happy a, birthday. Happy birthday. What a great, great present for you all. Thank you for your support. You know, again, if you want to do the Patreon thing, I would, I would welcome you, and I promise whatever you give me, I will give you, I will give you back more. And if I could just speak to that, because it's hard to talk about yourself, he did put up the recording of that song, Too Many Memories, because I know some of you were saying you really loved it, and that's the only place you can hear it right now is on Freebo's Patreon. So if you want to hear it again, the recording is so beautiful. Thank you. So sign up. Thank you. That's my plug. And my version of Angel from Montgomery, which, uh, you know, kind of took a little bit of the, what what I helped with that arrangement that found its way into Bonnie's record, and I just kind of changed it up a bit, and it's such, such an incredible song, you know, and there'll be a bunch of originals. And my book, Excerpt by Excerpt, Maria, just to let you know, I've already got oh. the first one up there. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll send it to you. Just uh, I don't know what okay, it's going to be good. about. I don't know what it is, but... I just know it's yes, going to un- unfold well. It's, it's going to just... be about sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah, there you go. Everything, it's not everything... now when. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Back at you. <laughs> Happy Jack. birthday, Freebo, and uh, many, many more. Thank you, yeah. Maria. And I hope to make it out to your big one uh, in at Rancho, Rancho Nicasio in September. I wrote the date down. And uh, yeah. if, if we're anywhere on the West I Coast. I did it on my 60th. And 20 years just flew by like that. <laughs> so I'm, I have a big one coming up. And uh, we're go- I'm just inviting all my alumni, everybody that ever played with me, everybody that was ever on the road with me. And, you know, my all my assistants, oh, the tales they could tell. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to have a we're going to have a great party and um I hope everybody comes out and helps us celebrate. Well, I, I certainly hope to make it. And if so, uh, can I play Midnight with you? I Will insist you it? upon it. <laughs> of okay. course. I, all right. Okay. All right. And uh, yeah, that's wonderful. Jack, maybe we'll see you at uh, Kerrville. I don't know. I don't know if uh, yeah, going to make it down Kerrville. or not. But definitely going to see you around. Okay. And uh Chris, a see pleasure. See you in a couple weeks. In a couple of weeks, we'll see you. Yeah, see you then. And uh, again, thank you all I'll for watching. Too, thank you for the support. And uh, it's been why I've seen all your names. There's so many wonderful, wonderful folks that I know from over the years. And uh, somebody that I don't know, oh, Don Kuhn says, no cake. We'll, we'll see about that. But this was my cake. Y'all gave me my cake. And uh, <laughs> it feels funny to say, hey, wish me a happy birthday show. But mm-hmm. that's kind of what it's about, you know. And, I, there's a real th- an interesting thing that I found out about the aboriginals. Uh, there's a thing in that society where uh, if, the, if it's, you're going to give somebody a birthday present in this society, we, if it's your birthday, Maria, you know, like I think, okay, what can I get, Maria? And I get you what I think you would want. In that society, they ask you what you want. What do you want for your birthday? You know, and then you give it to them, as long as it's within reason, of course. And I think that makes a whole lot of sense, really, <laughs> because you don't wind up with a bunch of cufflinks or something like that that you don't need. Oh, shit, I got I, you I think cufflinks. If, I, think if it, I think if it's your birthday, you should give everybody else presents. I know, well, that's, what I, that <laughs> that's oh. what I thought you were going to say. That's what I thought you were going to say. Oh, dear. You can well, send me uh, something, Freebo. Come on. I, I, yeah. Well, we will. We, we'll see how we did tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I actually, you know what? I, I owe you guys from last year. Yeah, you I, do. I, and believe me, I didn't I, want to bring it up, but you yes. did. You no, totally no, no, stole no. I, I, I've been feeling, I've been feeling guilty. I, I, between ice cream cake or cookies, somewhere between <laughs> the three, uh, I, I am, I am in your debt, and uh, or is it the other way around? I forget what the expression is, but whatever it is, I owe you guys. And Maria, just so you know, last year we did this, and right. <laughs> Uh, almost at the beginning, it's, it just started, and Alice and I were here, and the electricity went off. In the for, whole neighborhood. In the whole neighborhood for three hours, just from literally during the whole course of the show, you know, unbeknownst to anybody. So, of course, the internet is out. And so Jack and Chris were on, and we had to go to my friend's, was like half an hour away in Tarzana. And these guys, along with Brandon, 
held it down, <laughs> kind of playing disc jockey and going back and forth. And Brandon kind of turned to Johnny Carson and started asking some yeah, questions. Yeah, he was like, so, <laughs> what's fun. your first memory of Primo? <laughs> it was fun. We got to play twice as many songs as we played tonight. Yeah, <laughs> really. Was, <laughs> you did, so you funny. did a nice little back and forth. So I still owe you guys for that. That was a lot of fun. Oh, so. my God. Well, the best part of that was you were in rush hour traffic. Oh. You were driving like a maniac. And Alice held up the phone and you guys did an a cappella song on <laughs> yeah. FaceTime that we broadcast on you. And that was wonderful. In the car. In the car. That was great. You were moving. You guys... I mean, traffic was flying by and they're singing. What were you singing? You know, you know what it was? I it think was... we were singing Moon huh? Shadow. Sing, sing. Oh, teeny, bit. teeny bit. I'm being followed by a moon shadow. Moon shadow, moon shadow, leaping and hopping on the moon shadow, moon shadow, moon shadow. If I ever lose my hands, lose my plow, and lose my land, if I ever lose my land, wait, I won't have to work no more. Hmm. Something like that, Jack. It was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. While while we're driving, that was fun. <laughs> I'm gonna driving. take off, guys. Thank Chris, you, guys. Great we're to out see of here. Again. See ya. Happy Thank birthday. You. Thank you all. Safe travels. Bye, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Bye, Good night. Bye, Jack. Happy birthday, Freebo. Thank you. Bye, everybody in cyberspace. Thank you so much for joining. I ain't running no more, I ain't walking out the door I ain't running, I ain't running no more I ain't running no more like so many times before I ain't running, I ain't running no more I was caught in my confusion, an illusion of my own 